Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to design and 3D print game tokens. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And today is a really important day for me because I've finally gotten to the point in 3D printing when I've been able to design and print my own custom piece, which uh, is this maker token. And design's always been very important to me. All of my tutorials start with design and then move on through the making process. And I wanted to be able to do that for 3D printing as well. Now I started out doing a lot of work in laser cutting. And where I started design for laser cutting was game tokens, because that's really the simplest thing you can design and make. So some examples here are these just engraved tokens. Um, I have engraved and painted tokens. My favorite tokens are these Legend of the Five Rings tokens that are red on one side and blue on the other, so they're double-sided. Uh, and I thought a good place to start design for 3D would be to try to recreate some of these designs. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to take a very simple token where I already had the design drawn, and I'm going to import it from Adobe Illustrator to Blender, which is the 3D modeling software I'm using. I'm going to make it 3D, and then I'm going to export it so that I can pull it into Chai 2 Box, which is my slicing software, to 3D print it. Now, I've used a variety of resins here. I've done translucent. I'm going to show you how I used pigments designed for this UV resin to change the color of the translucent pigment. I've got gold. I've got purple here. I've also got an opaque white, which I think is really ideal for doing painting. And so I'm going to show you some quick and easy painting uh, processes that let you really get the design to pop on these. So I'll show you how to do all of this in this episode. I'm going to start with an Adobe Illustrator drawing I did for Arkham Horror tokens. So this is a clue token and I just want the image in the center of this token here. So I'm going to copy and paste that into a new document. I'm going to create a small 2 inch by 2 inch drawing and I'm going to paste that in. Now in order to have Blender see that as one image I have to create a compound path. So I'm going to make it a compound path and then I'm going to save it as an SVG. And I put it somewhere where I can find it when I open Blender. In Blender, I deleted the default cube they put in the middle in the camera and light, and then I import my SVG that I've just saved. And I have to navigate to that location and open it. Now, I can't even see it to begin with because it's small and it's who even knows where it is on the screen. So I make sure I'm in object mode. I select that curve, and then I hit N to open this sidebar and I put in the dimensions I want, 25 millimeters, in both the X and Y dimension. It's still flat though, so I'm going to select it and I'm going to add a modifier to it called Solidify. Now it has this thickness parameter and I'm going to put in a 4 there, uh, but I believe, yes, that's going to double, so it's 8, and that's really thicker than I want, so I'll make it thinner later. But I still have it selected. I've opened the Move widget and I'm using that to move it to the center of the design. You can quickly change the view by clicking on these X, Y, and Z circles. Now I'm going to add a mesh that's a cylinder and it comes in very small, two millimeters in all dimensions. So I'm going to make those bigger so it's the size of the token I want and uh, I'm going to make it about the thickness of a quarter inch piece of acrylic like my tokens I'm using as a reference. And now when I zoom in I can see that it's laying over top my design and so I need to select that and move it up so that it's on top of the token. By looking on the Z view I can move it to the center of the token visually. Now if I check back from the side I see it is thicker than I want it to be so I'm going to 
reduce the thickness of that. I can do that quickly in the dimensions that show up in this transformation panel that's open on the right. So I'm going to cut that down to four. And uh, it's going to be floating now, and I have to go back and move that flat. So it's touching the token body itself. Now I'm ready to export it as an STL file, which is the file type that my chai 2 box slicing software can import. So now I'm in chai 2 box I can open that file. So I navigate to it and select it. And I can tip it here and take a look, and it looks like what I expect it to look like. So all I need to do is get ready to print it. So I'm going to tip it up a little and put some supports under it. I'm using medium supports. I'm using a 40% density, which is pretty light. And I'm going from the platform. And then I just need to slice that and save it. When I made my first test tokens, I put them flat on the bed, and I was able to remove them. But as the tokens got larger and more rigid, they were harder to remove, which is why I went to using supports. Now that I had the process figured out, I decided I would create a maker token. And this is what I designed. I'm going to do a separate video that shows this design from scratch. I used the cherry blossom ring from my Legend of the Five rings tokens, but I created a new center for gray lightning. I printed the first one in clear translucent acrylic, and it turned out quite nicely. It was very easy to remove the supports. I cure it for four minutes from the top, and then I flip it over and cure it for another four minutes. And here's the final product. I ordered this set of resin colorants off of Amazon. It has 18 colors in it. And they're really designed for adding to clear transparent resin. So I'm going to create a gold here, and I'm counting the number of drops I'm putting in to see how many it takes to get to the color I'm interested in. I cloned my model so I could print three at once, and this is what I got. For those of you that haven't seen this, this is what's called a failed print. So I went into Chai 2 box, into the settings, and I increased the standard exposure time from a default of 9 seconds to 13 seconds. The first layers were fine, and that was a adequate change. I had a perfect print on my gold coin. So I printed up some additional clear and yellow for my paint test, and now I noticed that I had this groove in the center token of my clear print. It turned out this was due to a stretched portion of my FEP film, and I'm going to do a whole separate video on the FEP film issues, how to replace it, and tips and tricks. I wanted to check to make sure that 13 seconds was good enough regardless of what color I was using, so I mixed up a batch of purple. But now I'm being much more specific. I've got a measuring cup. I'm doing 100 milliliters. I'm really working at reproducibility. And that extended exposure time worked great. I had a successful print, but now I've got even bigger FEP problems. I'll tell you in my FEP video how to make sure this doesn't happen to you. But even these defective tokens will be good test subjects for my next step, which is painting. I'm going to be using this gel printing plate because it has a spongy but firm surface that's ideal for painting these tokens. I'm using my Citadel base paints that I use for painting my miniatures, and I use a brayer for rolling the paint out evenly. I started with the little tokens. Um, they worked pretty well. I use baby wipes to clean the gel plate, and I actually wash the brayer in between colors. I picked a nice blue base paint for my lighter resin colors, and I put a double coat on these. When I was first starting, I would not put out too much paint, and I would basically do one at a time, but I got a lot smarter at this as time went. And by the time I got to the gold, which, by the way, is my favorite, I'm really putting a lot on, and I'm laying out enough here that I can do four at a time before I have to re-roll the paint. 
I experimented with adding a layer of what's called a layer paint. This is a layer paint, a gold layer paint. And look how thin, I mean, I can't even roll it to, I can't even get it to stick to the gel plate. And not too surprisingly, the addition of this layer paint didn't really do much for the look of the tokens. Two coats of a base paint was plenty. So I think the translucent resins look really nice, even unpainted, especially given you can create really any color you want using the pigments. But if readability is important, the painting really adds. Uh, it works kind of on the clear translucent. I think gold, white, and probably even silver would work on the colored translucents. But the opaque white really seems to work with almost any color. My final step will be to give a coat of clear lacquer over these to protect the paint. My mind is really spinning now with lots of new ideas for things to make on my 3D printer. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.